Never use the low guard, said Liam Neeson's character in the Kingdom of Heaven movie. Um, actually, sometimes you want to use the low guard. Which ones? Why? Let me show you. My name is Alan, and this is The Sword's Path, the basic series. So, the low guards, let's review them first. There are many variants that can be classified as low stances in, let's say, um, there are at least 18 Fiore, uh, there are many in Japanese arts, but I use just four. Four stances that I think are the most essential. Let's talk about the plow guard. This is the single most common fencing stance in the world. It is present in literally every sword art out there. It is formed by pointing the sword at your opponent's throat. Not higher, not lower, at his throat. The plow guard is a versatile stance. It covers your center line by creating threat towards your opponent's center line. It allows for good defense with minimum effort and good offense with quick untelegraphed strikes. It is also the most instinctive of guards. If you give someone a sword for, for the first time in his life and tell him to get in stance on guard, he will probably, most probably, assume the foul guard. Instinctively. The Langenort, long point. It is a variant of the plow stance where you extend your sword towards your opponent's face to keep him at bay. There was a time when Langenort was extremely popular in Hima tournaments, but the art has progressed since then. People have learned how to deal with it, so it's not that popular anymore. The next guard is called the Fool's Guard, where you keep your sword down. You lower it either down the center or to the side, or to the upper side like this. Uh, Jan Fotkevich, the 2012 Swordfish champion, seems to prefer the stance, he uses it quite often. So, why is it called the Fool's Guard? Um, the scholars can't really agree on the point, but my theory is uh, that in the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, it was considered foolish to drop your guard like that. So, the Fool's Guard served towards luring your opponent towards your point. So the purpose of this guard was to deceive your opponent, make him think you are inept and experienced, while in fact, while assuming the Fool's Guard, I'm anticipating my opponent's blow, and I'm perfectly able to fend it off and counter. The variant of the Fool's Guard, known as the Rare Guard or Vaki no Kamae, like this, uh, it wasn't very common in European long sword fencing, but I think it is very useful for exactly the same purposes as the standard Fool's Guard. You bait your opponent, you lure him towards the juicy targets of your arm, your head, your leg, while, in fact, you anticipate his blows. The advantage this one has over the regular Fool's Guard is that your sword's length, your range, is concealed. You see, you don't know how far I can strike, whether it is here or here. The rare stance or Vakin the Kamaya puts your sword in a perfect position from a sweep that will throw your opponent's point aside and open him to a counter strike. So these are the four low guards that I use in my fencing. Um, the main difference between high and low stances aside from like this geometry uh, is their tactical context. I think the high stances are more offensive, more proactive where you force something, force an action into your opponent, while the low stances are more reactive, defensive, where you anticipate an action from your opponent. Um, assuming a low stance is usually a sign that you resigned the initiative instead of seizing it, while assuming a high stance, yeah, it's a clear communicate, right? <laughs> In our next lesson, we'll talk about uh, some cutting and footwork.